Welcome to the Parts Girl Podcast, powered by Parts Edge with Kaylee Filio. Conversations that will transform the way we do business. Gain insight into the wins and struggles from automotive professionals. Hey everyone, welcome to the Parts Girl Podcast. I'm interviewing Daryl today. Welcome, Daryl. Super excited to interview you. <laughs> Thank you for having me on, Kaylee. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on again. Yeah. So um, for those that don't know who you are, let us know where you're at, what your role is, and all that good stuff. My name is Daryl Terrell, the Parts and Service Director at Matt Bowers Chevy Metairie. I've been at this location for two years now. Um, I've been with Matt Bowers uh, going on six years now. I started out in the industry as an oil changer, and I, I worked my way up to a technician, to a master technician, to the shop foreman. And um, I just wanted to impact as much people as possible. Um, so I would, you know, switch careers to a leadership position, um, became the service manager, and now I'm the fixed ops, uh, fixed operations director at Matt Bowers Chevy Metairie. Wow, awesome. So how long have you been fixed ops? You said two years? Two years now, two years. Two years, wow. Okay, cool. I've got some questions for you. <laughs> first just give us a little background story um just how'd you get into the business how long have you been in total i've been in i guess you could say um all of my life you know my dad was a technician so i'm um, as young as i can remember i used to uh, go to work with him on um, my days and i want to say seven years old i wrote a clipboard and a and a hand reading repair order writing customers up Every Saturday, I would go to work, wake up with him in the morning. He used to take me. Um, Saturdays, every Saturday morning, it used to be freezing cold. We used to have to wait in the car and uh, wait for the car to warm up and go to work. But, um, though, you know, I, I did that and then um, went on to high school. And uh, my dad always told me to, he didn't want me to be a mechanic. He, he never wanted me to be a mechanic. He used to want me to be like a lawyer, a doctor. Um, but I was hard headed. So <laughs> after graduating high school, I, I, you know, got hired at a local mechanic shop, and I just did exactly what your dad said not to do. <laughs> uh, exactly what you told me not to do. Um, but he was proud yep. of it. He was definitely proud, and um, I just I stuck with it. Uh, went to college, played football. After I graduated college, um, got right back into automotive again, and here I am. I just worked my way up through the ranks. Wow, that's an amazing story. So you're definitely like your family. That's in your blood. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say. I, I feel I mean, every memory I have of the of a child with my dad working on a car or at work, you know, and it's something that um it, it inspired me, and I just loved uh I loved being in the shop with him. I had a passion for it. He had a deep rooted passion for it, and um you know as, as young as I can remember, I mean that's all I wanted to do would be like my dad, and uh he he definitely uh set me off in the right industry. Totally. So let's talk about that transition from service to fix ops. How did that happen? Did, is it something that the position just came available and you're like, you know, I want to try this or, you know, how did it all come about? I had like everything with a great mindset. I, I challenged myself to be the best at the position that I could possibly be. You know, it's something I constantly work at. And when I was a technician, I challenged myself not just to be a regular tech, but to be one of the best techs in the nation. And uh, the same thing when I became a service manager. I just didn't want to be a regular average service manager. I wanted to be one of the best service managers in the nation. And um, I think when you, you know, you challenge yourself to to be the best person you could be, opportunities always open up for you and doors always open up. So it, it was the opportunity that opened up for me at the right time. And, and I just stepped in. So what would you say the biggest struggle was when you transitioned from service to fixed ops? Because now you've got parts, parts and service. My business struggle with learning a parts section, learning a, you know parts catalogs. Um, it was it was that was my biggest struggle was pretty much learning a parts side of the industry, and uh, with service, you know, you you focus on service and <laughs> us service managers have a way of blaming parts for everything. So <laughs> when I became a fix up director, yeah. I had to take accountability for parts as well, and I had to find solutions um to help my parts department and help our parts department. And uh, join the forces, and, and and we play as a team because at the end of the day, it's all about helping the customer. And um, so parts and service have to work together. And if they're not working together, like some departments do, you know, and you got to find a culture to and create a culture where you guys all work on a team to smooth sell every day. Absolutely. So other than taking that responsibility of okay, I'm in 
I have parts now, so I'm not going to, I can't blame it on parts. What were some other ways that you guys over, or how did you overcome parts? Because it's not like you can just go be a parts counter person now, <laughs> you know, like how did you learn parts? Actually, Kimmy, I actually stepped in um, to multiple positions in a parts department. Uh, so I actually did oh. a few weeks behind a parts counter. And I was I was really, really shocked. Like, I had no idea how difficult that job was. And our parts department, you know, you go up to the parts counter and like, the guys make it look so easy. Um, but they actually have three to four different screens open at a time. And they, they're going through different catalogs. And it really opened my eyes. And I, and I actually stepped in for about two, two to three weeks of, you know, helping out behind the counter, pulling parts off the shelf, um, looking for part numbers. It was pretty interesting. Yeah. Actually, uh, stepped in, in into the parts department and filled the positions to learn it better and uh, to see it for myself. I'd say that's probably the best way to learn is to just do it. So then you're you're seeing their struggle, and then it's kind of like you can't say anything until you walk in someone else's shoes, right? I have to find respect for the parts department. Um, when I came in the next morning, I was you know, hey, how's the day going? You know, I'm bringing them donuts in the morning. Uh, because it's a tough world and. You you stand behind this counter and you have people that you understand the the tasks and the obstacles um that it takes to and the logistics to get a part, you know, to you. And uh once you understand that, um you, you have a, a new file respect for the people that actually do the job. Yeah, no, that's good. So I think that's probably a good recommendation for any fixed ops director just that doesn't that hasn't worked in parts. Work in parts for a couple of weeks. <laughs> then then also I probably you probably earned some respect with your team too, right? The parts team. Because they're like, oh, okay, he he cares. <laughs> you know, you gotta make sure the parts are correct and make sure you're ordering the right parts. Make sure you're pulling the right parts, make sure um the inventory is correct. Um it's a it's not an easy job. And I and then you know, another thing also, it's a lot of training involved also. A lot of training involved. It's a lot of what? I'm sorry. Training involved. It's a lot of training involved. You know, um, you just oh, yes. somebody to come in and run a run a parts department. Uh, it takes a lot of training, and it opened my eyes. And and all I can say is that um, it, I had a newfound respect for our parts department. And just like you said, that that actually transpired to the guys. Um, you know, respecting me and me respecting the guys, and it bringing more of a, a camaraderie into our shop. Yeah, that's really good. And especially, too, for your service advisors, too, because then it's not, you know, them against each other. They're actually working together to, you know, serve the customer because that's what matters. <laughs> or that is the still whole best. Yeah. Is there something that's within your day to day or how you accomplish your, you know, all your goals? Is there something that you can't live without that you use other than like your cell phone <laughs> or like a calendar, you know, like, is there something cool that you use to help you, I don't know, stay on track with things? One of the, the biggest things that I like to do that I can't live without is I like getting up early and start my day early. And uh, I have to go to the gym. Um, I have to do some kind of um, exercise before I start my day. It just, it, it wakes me up mentally. It makes me alert. If I don't have a workout, then, then I start the day off sluggish and I'm trying to, you know, when, when I wake up early in the morning and I, I get a nice, good workout in, nice hot shower, I'm ready to attack the day. And um, I'm ready to go by like five o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm done with the gym. I'm out of the shower, ready to go to work. Now, on the flip side of that, if I don't go to the gym, I'm still dragging six, seven o'clock in the morning. So um, something I can't go without is uh, is waking up early to get a, a fresh early morning workout in and uh, getting my mental my mental awareness, my mental alertness, um, getting my brain functioned functioning and um just attacking the day ready to roll yeah so it's like your you time of like this is absolutely no negotiation i have to do this and you can't live without it <laughs> i have to do it yeah is there a really hard lesson that you had to learn just you know transitioning into your different roles that you've had is there a really big share that you want to talk about one of the lessons one of the hardest lessons you had to learn was um you got to follow up um you can ask somebody to do their job and without follow up and without inspecting, you know what you expect, you'll you'll be disappointed. So, uh, I learned that um, when you ask people to, to to do a job or complete a task, make sure you follow up with them, and just don't assume it's gonna get done. But um, always to inspect what you expect. That totally makes sense because you know I feel like that's probably a hard thing as a manager because you don't want to feel like you're micromanaging, you know, the person. 
you want to trust that they're going to get the job done and do what you expect. But also it's part of your job to make sure it happens properly. So it's, you kind of, there's probably a right a way to do it and a wrong way to do it to make people feel like they're not doing a bad job. You're just doing your job. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that was my biggest, one of my biggest flaws um, early, in my early management stages was just believing that people were, you know, you ask them to do it and it will get done. Um, you know, everybody's time frame is different. Um, everybody works at a different pace, but it's just following up and making sure the job get completed. Yeah, I think probably too, uh, something that I talk a lot about with managers is a, a lot of times you're a manager because you're really good at what you were doing. And so your expectations are that of other people. And sometimes people just don't operate at the same level. It doesn't mean that they're not good. It's just really hard to accept. Like, why aren't you doing that fast enough? <laughs> whenever, uh, whenever I face with that situation, um, I always uh, remind myself to, to bring clarity, make sure you effectively communicating and just bring clarity to that employee. Um, and sometimes it's just that it's not a clear path of communication and um, it's the misunderstanding and, uh, you just got to make sure you bring in clarity. Um, you have a set time frame. And then, like I said, you follow up and inspect uh, what you expect. So what do you do about an employee that is just not getting it? Like you've tried everything, <laughs> you know, you're like, okay, am I not communicating right? At what point, I guess, do you kind of give up on someone? Yeah, I guess that's my question. I tell myself that I never give up on an employee. Employees give up on themselves. And mm -hmm. I I know that um that me and my staff will take the shirt off our back to help an employee out. Um we're gonna train, we're gonna teach, we're gonna correct. If it's that time to to make the call or make a call, it's it's never a call that we made on our, you know, by ourselves. It's usually that employee. Um I always say employees fire themselves. And um, it's usually the employee firing themselves. Absolutely. You know, I don't I don't believe in a high turnover rate. I believe in hiring people right the first time, uh, making sure you 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 select the right people. And we're always just trying to push each other to get better. And at that point, though, like you know, it is a point. You know, sometimes it's a plan no return with employees, and you do got to cut the, you know cut the cord and and move in different directions. Um, but at the same time, it's all about training and um, building your people up. So that's what we really focus on, building our people. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then so just a shout out to like any vendors, what are like your top three must have tools or vendors that you use or that you've identified as becoming a fixed ops director? Cause now you have probably more control of like, you know, implementing things. What are your like top three, like, or top two, Vendors that you like to use? Um, well, we use uh, GD Justice Brother Services. Trevor Connect is another uh, great vendor that we use. And then X Time is another great vendor that we also use. Oh, good. Okay. And were you part of the, implement uh, the implementing it or were they already there? Yeah, we actually have so many different vendors that we use. Uh, I feel bad I left some people out. Um, we, we use some <laughs> vendors. But uh, some, yeah, the ones I listed, they was. So I put you I put you on the spot <laughs> I was like which vendor do you use I just want to give a shout out because I feel like that's the thing with fixed ops there are so many vendors out there that's like how do you make the decision which one's right and everything so I was just wondering like is there a couple that you picked and that you help implement is I guess my question the only one that I, I hope picked since I've been here was repair power and um they do amazing okay. powerful they do an amazing job with, uh, with you know, helping us show our customers fair pricing. Um, they do an amazing job with um, generating traffic for us. And um, overall, this is a, uh, an amazing company. And they, they work with us every uh, every month. We do follow-up calls. Um, we show our results. You know, it's it's a, a great relationship we have with them. That's really good. I've heard such great things about RepairPal, so <laughs> that's awesome. And did you get any pushback when you wanted to implement that or was it super easy? Like all the team were like, everyone was like, yes, let's do this. <laughs> no, we were all on board. Um, it's all about growing. Yeah. And um, it was just something I've seen to help um, help bring more customers through the door, to help our customers out. And at the end, end of the day, it's all about our customers. Yeah. It sounds like you really coached your team to really see that too. So. You're right, cool. Wrestling and charity also agree. Um, they definitely um, they, oh, yeah. 
they generated an amazing website for us. Um, it looks beautiful. Leanne, she she gets on calls with me once a month. We update our website. Um, they, yeah, that, I have nothing but great words for them in that amazing company. And that's fixed off marketing. Correct, correct. Fixed off marketing. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I yeah, they're also really great too. <laughs> I love them. Okay, so this one's a fun one. I guess I mean since you've always your family's always been the business I don't know if it's that fun but <laughs> what would how would your grandma describe what you do oh uh, my grandma um <laughs> and no one uh and I'm sorry if she's not still around <laughs> no I'm fine you know um this is kind of funny um knowing my grandma oh. probably be similar to my mother so you know how grandparents always uh talk uh, they always exaggerate, um, you know, their grandchildren. So she probably going, like, oh, my, my grandson, uh, Junior, they call me Junior in the family. My grandson, Junior, he, he owns 17 dealerships. I'm like, no, I don't own 17 dealerships. I'm a fixed operations director. But, uh, that, that's probably something along the lines she'll say. What? Pops. <laughs> so funny. Grandparents do exaggerate. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling the whole town. He owns 17 dealerships. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Do you do you think your mom does that too? I know she don't. I know she does. You know she does. <laughs> I love it. Do you guys live in the same town? No, my mother actually lives in New York and I'm I'm down a little okay. Yeah. okay, so it's a little bit more believable because you're not like living in the same town. So you know, everyone thinks you're famous in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they know the truth. Yeah, they they know the truth. <laughs> they, okay. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Do you have a, I think I already asked you this on the live, but I'm going to ask you again. Do you have a favorite saying or mantra that you like to remind yourself just to keep your, your mind set there? I have so many different sayings and quotes that I go through my mind on a daily basis. Maybe just one that comes to mind. <laughs> Everybody want to win, um, but nobody want to put the work in. To, to achieve the results. Um, that's one of the, the sayings I live by, um, especially when I face with adversity. But mm -hmm. that's not, I, I see a lot of, you know, it's, you know, winning takes a lot of hard work and, and a lot of setbacks and uh, all about getting through your trials and tribulation, tribulations. And, and uh, you, you just got to keep moving forward and uh, keep fighting. Even when you feel like you're losing, um, you got to keep fighting and moving forward. That, that's a great reminder because you know, there's, I'm just going through it right now. I feel like just, there's so many bad days sometimes and you're just like, it's okay. It's okay to have a bad day. It doesn't mean your whole life sucks. <laughs> like, uh, like, keep forward. Take, take your losses and keep moving forward. Exactly. Just keep moving forward because the next day is going to be better. <laughs> um, Did I ask you this too? I don't remember, but do you have a favorite car or do you want to share like your daily driver? What do you drive daily? Uh, more <laughs> Favorite car, the uh, the Nissan GTR. Um, it's something I treated myself to when I became a a, a Nissan Mastic. So I went out and I, you know, I had to I had to have an experience, the best Nissan ever built in America, ever built. Period. Um, and that that's my my favorite car. I don't daily drive it no more. Yeah, I don't get. Are you it. still own it? Yeah, I still own it. Right. Yeah. Now it's just oh, very cool. You know, I I keep it all nice and shiny. <laughs> very cool. And then what's your daily driver? I drive a BMW 6 Series. Nice. Very nice. So that goes fast too, right? <laughs> uh, it's more of a, I call it more of a gas saver. Uh, the, the Nissan GTR, um, you'll be filling that car up every, every day and a half, you know. Well, so BMW will give me a whole week on one gas tank. <laughs> that's good. You have to drive far to work? Yeah, I drive about a, I drive about a, probably about um, a hour and a half a day, 45 minutes each way. A hour and a half? What are you, about 45 minutes? Oh, 45. Okay. Okay, 45 each day. Oh, wow. I don't miss that. When I lived in San Diego, it was about 45, sometimes even an hour. Whoa. When Just because of traffic. When I lived in New York City, it was really, really bad. It was really bad. Yeah. Traffic is no joke. It takes, but I do miss like having that time in my car and like listening to podcasts and like just being alone. <laughs> That's what I do. Well, so, is is there anything productive you do while you're drive you're on your drive? Yes, that's that's what I do. Um, I get in my car and I listen to audio books, and 
Uh, I listen to so many different titles, and that's my production time. It is sometimes I'll yeah. get in a car and listen to some good music, but for the most part, I listen to audio book my way. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Whenever I get to drive far, I'm like, okay, some listen to podcasts and some audiobooks, and then also, so you don't have to think, you just listen to music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah listen to so many different titles you know um I, you know over you can listen to an audio book in, in about two days and you can read you know listen to an entire book and then sometimes i listen to them over and over again three times just so i could grasp all the content in a book what is your favorite or your go-to one that you like to listen to um i just finished reading an extreme extreme ownership uh, one of my favorite favorite absolute favorite books is um winning by tim grover did you say wins? Winning. Winning. I take Winning. Right. Gotcha. I'm using book. I wrote it down. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I think that's all the questions. I mean, I could sit and ask questions all day long. Is there anything you want to ask me before we wrap it up? Um, I, I, I remember last time I asked, what was your, um, what was your, your, your top five goals for, for the year? Um, well, you did ask me that. <laughs> okay. What's next, uh, Kaylee, uh, Kaylee Filia? What's next? What's next? Well, I, you know, I'm having a baby, so that's next. <laughs> but um, also to just like maintaining what I'm doing, because I feel like I found this really good groove that I worked really hard to get to. It's been, I've been in sales with Parts Edge for about six years, seven years now, maybe six. And it's just been the last couple of years where I've really felt some really good momentum. So I just want to like keep that momentum and have a baby and <laughs> keep, keep going. Yeah. What it's all about. Uh, once you once you have some momentum, um, keep building on that, and um, that's how you yeah. can grow and just continue to get to the next level. I love it. Yeah. Thanks for asking that. <laughs> if I'll. If anyone wants to get a hold of you, I'm assuming LinkedIn is probably the best place to find you. Yeah. Um. You can find me definitely on my LinkedIn page. Um. Or you can find me on Facebook. Um. Daryl Terrell Jr. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks so much, Kayla. I appreciate you having me on. It's always a great time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Parts Edge, the power tool for your parts department. We hope you're leaving feeling motivated, challenged, and inspired 